I was very surprised when I got to know that the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra is quite a popular device in our country. A lot of folks have been asking for a detailed review of this phone in our comment section so I did exactly that. I moved my sim to the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra which is something that I do for all our full reviews and comparisons and decided to test it out. And in my testing I noticed that this is possibly the most practical and sensible flagship that one can buy today. Of course I'm going to be doing a full review in this video and I've you know added a camera comparison with the Xiaomi 12 Pro for better added context because you know in the previous comparison the Motorola H30 Ultra did beat the OnePlus 10 Pro when it came to camera performance. All right without wasting any more time I'm Ashad you're watching Track It English. Let's go. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on the design of the phone, I've spoken at length in my hands-on video and of course the comparison that I did with the OnePlus 10 Pro, if you guys have missed that out, go check it out in the you know link that pops up right now. Basically it's a very classy looking phone with Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the back, on the front and of course a you know, metal railing on the sides and of course it's curved on the front and the back as well. One thing I did notice in my time with the phone is that the metal railing is extremely thin so it sort of bites into your hand when you're holding and using it but otherwise uh, you know the the weight distribution is pretty good. I'd suggest that if you do end up buying the phone, use the case that you get with the box or you know buy a separate case for it. I must mention that one reviewer, I can't remember who specifically spoke about the fact that there are some scuff marks forming on the you know outer ring of the camera module and that is happening on our device as well. So protecting the phone with a case is an absolute must. But talking about that camera module itself, I really like the step design. It looks very very good. But that does cause a whole lot of table wobble. Now I love making these review videos for you folks. So if you've come this far and if you like the kind of content we make, it'd be great if you guys can give us a thumbs up and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to our channel so that we can become a bigger family of Tracking Tech English members. I don't know what to call it. What should we call it? Let me know in the comment section below. Another thing about the design that a lot of people buying flagship phones should take seriously is the fact that the Motorola H30 Ultra comes with USB 3.1 standard. Now that enables faster data speeds and of course game streaming using HDMI as well and apart from that you get faster PD charging support to up to 240 watts and you know what that is how Motorola has enabled 125 watt charging on this phone. Now to close up the design conversation I must mention that IP52 is not enough for a flagship Motorola should have at least provided IP67 or IP68 for better peace of mind. One reason why I absolutely loved using the Motorola H30 Ultra is its display. It's a 6.67 inch POLED panel, it's a 10 bit panel and you've got HDR10 plus support as well. And you know what, when you're watching HDR videos on this phone, it can reach a peak brightness of 1250 in select specific points where you know it needs to touch that brightness. But even otherwise in daily usage when you take it out and when adaptive brightness is on, this one can you know actually breach the 1000 nits mark. It's a very very bright display outdoors. And I would go as far as to say that it is one of the brightest Android displays out there. Although talking about HDR playback, you do get HDR support on YouTube and Amazon Prime, but Netflix hasn't been whitelisted yet. I expected it to be whitelisted by now. I mean, it's been a while since I made a video on this phone, so that hasn't happened yet. Hopefully it'll come soon. And for purists like myself, when it comes to color, I change every phone's display to the natural mode or the cinematic mode. And on the Motorola H30 Ultra, the natural mode has a very good sRGB color space with uh, you know very good delta e rating as well it's very close to natural and it goes without saying that among all the mainstream brands making flagship android phones today Motorola offers the highest refresh rate at 144 Hz. So 144 Hz of course is extremely smooth in daily usage. You can use it at 144 Hz or you can use it at auto refresh. What that means is that it will, you know, use variable refresh rate to switch between 48 Hz, 60 Hz, 90 Hz, 120 Hz, 144 Hz depending on the content that's playing on the screen. But it's not an LTPO panel like on the Xiaomi 12 Pro or the OnePlus 10 Pro which allows those phones to go as low as, you know, 10 Hz or 1 Hz thereby offering you know better battery efficiency as well when it comes to the display although that doesn't really matter in the case of Motorola and I'll tell you why when I come to the battery section of the review and the other thing that's awesome about the display is the touch sampling rate at 576 hertz touch response is absolutely smooth on this phone and you can further enhance it using game time especially when you're gaming so that's definitely an advantage now haptic feedback is tight enough it's good enough it's got a decent x-axis vibration motor 
but I feel that, you know, Pixel phones do it better. Also, part of the display is the in-display fingerprint scanner. It's super fast to unlock, no complaints out there. However, I really feel that all these brands that, you know, place their in-display fingerprint scanners so low should understand that their phones are so big and it's not easy to do it without, you know, having to do hand gymnastics. Now, tying in with that display experience is, you know, the speakers or the audio performance that, you know, makes up the whole multimedia experience. And this one's obviously tuned with Dolby Atmos, where you've got the earpiece working as the other channel and you've got a proper dedicated speaker at the bottom. Now, this speaker is loud enough. It's not the loudest out there, but it's very dynamic, sounds very rich and clean. You know what, take a listen to it for yourself and in comparison with the Xiaomi 12 Pro, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Now, I tried a bunch of truly wireless earphones with the Motorola H30 Ultra and they work really well. Bluetooth headphones work well with the Motorola H30 Ultra. They sound rich, dynamic, very well tuned. I have no complaints over there. But I did notice one problem. My Shanling UA2 high-risk dongle didn't uh, you know, get recognized by the phone. So I tried another basic dongle and that one didn't work either. I don't know what's up. Uh, you know, I'll test it a little bit more and let you guys know if there's something that changes, but looks like uh, you know, the Type-C to 3.5mm dongles are not being recognized by the Motorola H30 Ultra at the moment. All right, coming to the camera part of the review, you know that both these phones have fantastic camera specs. I'm not gonna speak about it. There'll be a chart in front of you. Take a look at that. But the headliner on the Motorola H30 Ultra is its 200 megapixel camera sensor. And it's got, you know, high-risk cameras, even for the ultra wide, the telephoto, and of course the selfie camera as well. And Xiaomi has a very basic stack, very nice stack actually, if you ask me, of 350 megapixel cameras, and all of them tuned very similarly. Now, starting off with the detailed retention, on both, they are nearly identical in good light. It's not like the H30 Ultra has a 200 megapixel camera, so it captures more details. Both are equally good. Now, Motorola's algorithm does ensure that you get way closer to natural looking colors. It might look muted for some, but it tries to capture the scene like my eyes saw it. Xiaomi is slightly warmer in comparison, but definitely tastefully done to make it stand out when you look at it side by side. Therefore, the Xiaomi 12 Pro's pictures might feel better suited for social media for a lot of folks because it's contrast heavy and it's also, you know, slightly warm as well. One area where the Xiaomi 12 Pro does beat the you know Motorola H30 Ultra is in picking out the right white balance, especially when there's a warm scene uh, you know, in question. Every image that I shot with the Motorola H30 Ultra was cooler in comparison to the you know Xiaomi 12 Pro. And one area where I actually expected Xiaomi to perform better is in HDR performance, but take a look at the samples. Motorola is actually doing HDR better than Xiaomi. Now, when you're shooting friends and family with both of these phones, they do processing slightly differently. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. You get a nice, warm looking facial tone on the Xiaomi, whereas Motorola keeps it more natural. But yes, it does get the color of the black jacket that Sagar is wearing entirely wrong with a completely cool tone. This is where Moto goes for a cooler look. Against the light, however, both offer good dynamic range. I'd say both are equally good for pictures of friends and family, but some might prefer the Xiaomi 12 Pro. I have an inkling. If you do prefer, the Xiaomi 12 Pro? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, portraits, on the other hand, on the Xiaomi 12 Pro have better edge detection and bokeh as well. But I like the traditional portraiture that you can achieve with the 35mm, 50mm and 85mm, you know, simulation, lens simulation that Motorola has on the Motorola H30 Ultra. In low light shots, I went with the preconceived notion that the Xiaomi 12 Pro will invariably be better than the Motorola H30 Ultra. But boy, I was so wrong and you really don't need the flash for shooting pictures. That happened naturally. I'm not even kidding. I did not write that down in the script. Anyway, I noticed that Motorola picks out more details and keeps the noise, but Xiaomi softens the details in a bit to control the noise. Technically, Motorola's approach is better as many photographers will tell you. In extreme low light, however, Xiaomi has better light sensitivity, but I wouldn't use either of these pictures, so make what you want of it. Now, I want to bring this specific image into your uh, you know, consideration because if you look at it, the Motorola H30 Ultra brings out more details from the statue and it exposes the statue better and even the background better than the Xiaomi 12 Pro. There 
there are situations where the Motorola H30 Ultra does perform better than the Xiaomi 12 Pro in low light. Having said that, there are certain situations where the Motorola H30 Ultra is better, sometimes the Xiaomi 12 Pro is better. But I think that the Xiaomi's faster autofocus with eye autofocus is helping create sharper looking, you know, pictures of people. But then again, I mean, I don't see that, I don't think that the Motorola is that bad at all. Now, when it comes to the 50 megapixel ultra wide angle captures, both are equally sharp, but color science consistency is better on the Xiaomi 12 Ultra. Now, this is why I was telling you that Xiaomi's idea of going for equal megapixel sensors on all the three cameras probably made it easier for them to do color science consistency better. Low light ultra wide angle detail and exposure is also equally matched on both ultra wide angle shots. But the one thing that Moto does is add macro capability with its ultra wide that is not possible on the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Now both the phones have your bare minimum 2x telephoto lens but Xiaomi has a slightly higher resolution 50 megapixel sensor but you still get 12.5 MP outputs which is 12 MP on the uh, you know Motorola H30 Ultra. But both are equal sharp it's not like the Xiaomi 12 Pro is better just because it has a higher resolution sensor although color sense consistency is where Xiaomi wins again low light 2x shots are slightly better on the H30 Ultra though coming to selfies that 60 megapixel selfie camera on the Motorola H30 Ultra is fantastic you get sharper pictures you get better facial tones just better everything HDR2 is infinitely better just take a look at the difference in the pictures same is true for portrait selfies and low light selfies as well Motorola selfie game is on a different level altogether with the H30 Ultra compared to the Xiaomi 12 Pro. On the flip side, the Xiaomi 12 Pro offers better video recording using its rear camera stack. You get 4K 60fps video recording on both with the primary camera, but Motorola drops frames at the start whenever you're shooting video. Xiaomi also shoots at a higher bitrate and with better audio quality as well. Do let me know in the comment section below what you thought about the image quality, the image stabilization and the sound recording. Do let me know in the comment section below what you thought about the image quality, the image stabilization and the sound recording. In fact, Xiaomi does one better by offering 4K 60fps in the ultra wide angle camera too, which is not possible on you know the Motorola H30 Ultra, which tops out unfortunately at only 1080p 30fps. In low light, using the primary camera again, Xiaomi offers better low light sensitivity in video capture. Selfie videos is a bit of a toss up. Motorola can do 4K 30fps, and uh, you know Xiaomi can do 1080p 60fps. Of course, Xiaomi cannot do 4K video, and Motorola cannot shoot 60fps video. So, do you like better frame rates or do you like better resolution? Let me know in the comment section below. Having said that, Xiaomi sound recording is definitely better than the Motorola H30 Ultra. So frame rates versus resolution. I think 30 FPS is good enough for front camera. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about the stabilization, the picture quality. So frame rates versus resolution. I think 30 FPS is good enough for front camera. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about the stabilization, the picture quality. Overall, both the phones have their own pluses and minuses when it comes to camera. So you have to figure out what is your use case. Now, if you want great selfies, if you want sharp textures, if you want good low light shots and great HDR, the Motorola H30 Ultra is the way to go. But if you want better video recording, if you want better color sense consistency across the different cameras, and if you want uh, you know, a phone that can take slightly better pictures with better portraits as well, the Xiaomi 12 Pro is the way to go. All right, coming to the performance, you all by now know that the Motorola H30 Ultra comes with 8 Plus Gen 1, LPDDR5 RAM, UFS 3.1 storage. Now this is the 8 128 GB variant of the phone. The 12 256 GB variant has also been promised by Motorola, but uh, I haven't seen the variant yet, so we'll have to wait. Now when it comes to tuning, Motorola is going for better thermal efficiency and longer battery life. What I noticed with our benchmark testing is that we got the best multi-core score on an Android flagship till date on the Motorola H30 Ultra. But for some, odd reason every time I tested Antutu I couldn't get it to go past the you know 900,000 mark it never touched the 1 million mark which is generally the case with most you know 8 plus gen 1 phones I have a feeling that's really a problem with my unit per se because I saw GSM Arena's review and they've actually breached the 1 million mark and a few others have as well so I think that there's a problem with my unit but more than those benchmark numbers what I care about is the throttling performance and of course uh, you know whether it heats up in daily usage in our CPU throttle test I got a CPU stability of uh, you know 70% and on the 3D mark wireless test 
test, I got 65.3%. Now this is definitely not the best numbers when it comes to Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but when compared to 8 Gen 1, it is definitely better. But what I see is that it's a trend that Motorola is not pushing for performance per se, but you know, trying to maintain a right balance of performance and efficiency. Because what I noticed in my gaming, uh, you know, session, I ran Apex Legends for 25 minutes straight and the phone didn't heat up at all. It didn't cross 40 degrees at all, which is fantastic. And apart from that, very few frame drops as well. Now, for someone like me who games for maximum 30 minutes, two sessions of Apex Legends at stretch, it's absolutely fine. But if you're a gamer who's gonna be playing continuously hours and hours, then maybe the Motorola H30 Ultra won't be for you. But I still like the performance balance out here. And why I like the performance balance out here is because you get fantastic battery life despite the fact that it's only got a 4,500 mAh battery inside. I say only because a lot of other phones have 5,000 mAh batteries inside. Now with that 4,500 mAh unit, I consistently got six hours of screen on time with 144 Hertz refresh rate set on at all time and on 4G plus data as well. So if you do auto refresh, refresh rate, you can easily expect six and a half to seven hours of screen on time. It's very good battery life. Something like the Xiaomi 12 Pro cannot match at all. In fact, a lot of 8 Gen 1 phones cannot. Did we ever expect Motorola to do 125 watt charging speeds? No, right? I mean, but yeah, I mean, Motorola is doing it now. And with 125 watt, it's not giving you that, you know, entire 125 watt speeds that you can expect. It's still being very conservative. So it took me about 28 to 30 minutes to charge from zero to 100%. Still pretty fast, I'm okay with that. You also do get wireless charging for what it is worth and reverse wireless charging as well. And Motorola also has a couple of extra options in the battery settings for overcharge protection and optimized charging. All of this, you know, helps with battery longevity. Now, talking about wireless charging, Motorola supports 50 watt uh, wireless charging using the turbo power charger, but I didn't see the turbo power wireless charger listed anywhere, so I don't think it's available at the moment for you to buy. Anyway, when it comes to the battery performance, the battery life, the battery charging, I like the fact that Motorola has left no stone unturned. All right, network wise, I got consistent 4G plus on the Motorola H30 Ultra. Great call quality and great mic quality as well. The other side was very, uh, you know, happy with the voice that they heard. So no problems at all. And Wi-Fi performance is stellar too. And for 5G, of course, all the 5G bands, almost all the 5G bands are supported. So no worries out there. I'm just waiting for 5G to hit Pune so I can properly test it out for you guys across different networks. That's definitely a video in the making. I promise you that. Now coming to the one reason why I love Motorola phones and that is the my UX experience you get on you know top of you know vanilla android in this case android 12. Now Motorola promises three years of software updates and four years of security updates on top of it so that's definitely a good thing but we'll have to wait and watch if Motorola actually lives up to that promise. You know what if you're watching this video three or four months down the line let me know if you got that android 13 update. Let's hold Motorola accountable for this. Obviously I do like the embellishments that you get on top of you know basic vanilla android. The motor gestures with this chop chop feature for torchlight is damn cool. Uh, that's one of the features and apart from that you also get the cool edge light features because it's got a curved display and you've got ThinkShield and Motorola adds Strongbox which is a physical hardware on top of it for better security. Now this is something that you cannot see with your eyes but it's working in the background to ensure that you've got better security. And of course there's ready for for that you know desktop connectivity desktop like experience that you can pass on to the big screen. Now, I've been using this phone for a while. You must be wondering, Esha, did you face any bugs? Honestly, none, not one. I think once there was a bit of a stutter or you know, some app crashed, I can't remember, but never again. It was absolutely smooth sailing. So, the Motorola H30 Ultra. At 55,000, I think it's easily one of the best value for money out there. Like I mentioned, a practical, sensible flagship. Even at 60,000 without the bank discounts, it's a good value. You get a kitted out flagship with almost every single feature that you can think of, with a few things missing here or there. But one thing that I'm really glad about is that Motorola has definitely delivered on the camera performance. I thought it would not be great considering Motorola's history with camera algorithms, but it's done a good job with the H30 Ultra. Of course, there are still some loose ends to fix, but I think once that is fixed, hopefully it will be, then the Motorola H30 Ultra will be unbeatable. And I really hope that Motorola also works on those software updates. If you do end up buying the H30 Ultra, I'm sure that you will be happy using it. And for those who are considering a flagship Android phone, this should definitely be in your list if you don't want that crazy zoom that the S22 Ultra offers. All right, that's it from me. So I think that this review should have been helpful. 
even so if you guys have any other specific doubts let me know in the comment section below and i'll try to answer them until next time this is ashad signing off keep tracking and stay safe